So <coughs> welcome back after a break. And uh, um, today and uh, next uh, Tuesday, yeah, we, we will try to uh, say finish the overview of uh, the uh, main uh, foundations of React. Uh, what we have up to now is an uh, understanding of uh, uh, components and properties, uh, and we show how to build uh, uh, some sort of static web page where we can uh, you know, um, generate some content starting from, from data and uh, implement the, pro the, the components uh, and having these components customize the rendering according to the values and properties, okay? But right now, everything should be, will be static, has been static. No? Once generated, the page doesn't change anymore. Uh, and this is a consequence of the functional nature of uh, components. If a component only depends on its properties, unless the properties change in some way, the component is you know, uh, forced to render always in the same way. And if, if properties come from other components, uh, uh, recursively, uh, uh, th the same happens before, so nobody can change these properties if they are generated by another component that only depends on its properties and so on. Okay, so right now we have a pipeline for generating a, a tree of components uh, that all depend on some set of, let's say, initial properties, and they just propagate down, uh, but every time they are rendered, they will always render the same thing. So for ha adding some interactivity, we need to have some um, escape mechanism, something that in a functional context uh, where everything is immutable, everything um, is uh, uh, purely functional, so it will render always in the same way and so on, uh, something that may allow us to add some uh, extra mechanism for handling some variability or handling some uh, communication with the external environment and so on. So something that escapes the purely functional way. Otherwise, we'll be forced just to build static web pages. And uh, so React uh, invented a mechanism for adding uh, two functional components. So we are still always in an idea where a component is a pure function. But inside this function, we may have special hooks special calls uh, to strange functions, okay, that uh, allow us to provide some non-functional behavior to our components in a very, very controlled way, okay? So we are not free to mutate properties or change values and so on as we want. But we have the mechanism for doing that in a controlled way. Hmm? And this is the <coughs> general idea of, uh, the, of this hooks, okay? Uh, we, when we have a component uh, declared in a functional way, uh, the main uh, limitation that we saw is that it's a pure function. So from prompt uh, to render tree. So uh, we mentioned last time that every component should have a state, and the state is something that the component remembers and the component can change, but we having an internal state is in a way in conflict with being a pure function. A pure function only depends on the input. But if I have an internal state, uh, well, when I call that component or that function many times, it may provide me different results because maybe it remembers internally, I don't know, how many times it was called, for example. Okay, so uh, in a pure functional um, setting, the state should not be allowed. And we are trying to pull it in. And uh, the same should uh, be said for side effects. What defines side effect? Uh, anything that, uh, in a way, uh, influences uh, the external of the, react of the React application. For example, one side effect could be to uh, fetch some data from a server, where the React application communicates with the external. So it's not. So the function will not only work from its properties, but the function is allowed in a way to contact an external resource, an external server to get information or to save information, to store information. 
which is of course something that is really needed, but it uh, should be done outside the pure functional uh, mechanism. Okay, so uh, the we need at least for these two main reasons, having an internal state that for which the component may remember some information and can evolve their content and the side effects for communicating with the external environment. Uh, we need a, a mechanism such as the, the, these hooks, uh, okay, that uh, allows us to manage the state, ac access external resources, manage side effects, uh, and so on, uh, in a controlled way. Uh, there are several basic hooks uh, defined uh, in React. Uh, a hook is just a special function, let's say, okay? And all the hooks uh, start with the name uh, use, which is unfortunate because in, in, many, in many cases the verb use doesn't mean anything related to the, uh, to the semantics of the hook. But anyway, just a convention. So you can say, you can see a lot of functions that are use something. Uh, these are the main fun hooks uh, that are predefined inside the React uh, standard library. But you can find that when you are maybe using external libraries, they use their own, they define, sorry, their own hooks. Uh, so there may be more. You, we can also define uh, our own hooks uh, and so on. Okay, uh, the idea is that uh, these functions most of these functions uh, create an object for you or a set of objects. And these objects are linked uh, to a component, so can be used inside the component, but uh, have a life cycle of their own. They exist independently. So they can remember states, they can do something outside and so on, okay? We will mainly use this, this, the first three ones uh, use state, use effect, and use context. Use state for managing state, and this is the work that we are doing today. Use context, we'll see that we it's an extension of the state, where we want to have uh, some say, global state shared across many components. So state and context are two ways of managing the state. One at the component level, state, and the other at the application level or group of components level. And use effect uh, is used for, will be used by us for handling uh, basically communication with the server. Hmm? Uh, they call it a side effect, it's a bit a more general hook, uh, but they, they will we see later. We are practically not going to use the other ones, uh, um, especially in, mo in most of the cases, uh, they are useful, but uh, these three are let's say, the essential ones. So we'll see in a moment how we use them. Okay, especially today, we focus a bit more on use state. Uh, I, I said this can escape from the functional mechanism, the purely functional mechanism in a controlled way, okay? Uh, and this means that there are several constraints over how and when we can call this function, these hooks. Mm -hmm. And we, we'll see some rules later on, but the idea is that, they, that you could call of them right at the top or right at the beginning of the component before doing anything else. Hmm? But we'll come to that. So with this knowledge that we have some mechanism in addition to propagating properties, um, let's try to see the larger picture, okay? So we have a React component here, and we know, up to now we know that it can create a tree of elements that are, and these elements can be, are normally other React components, or at the bottom of the, of the tree, there are simple DOM components, okay, DOM nodes. And uh, this component is a function and can customize the rendering tree according to the properties that it receives. That's easy, that's the easy part. From properties to render tree. And of course, in the render tree, we can propagate some props uh, to every children, okay? This is what we did last week. Now we are adding uh, another block here, state. So you see the props are unidirectional. 
so a component can only receive prop from above and pass properties below there's no way of doing that in a different direction there's no way of modifying properties these are parameters that you get and you should treat them as constant and immutable okay so it's a very unidirectional data flow from above to below from top to bottom properties flow can be inside a component we can compute we can do some any, any you know, computation or extraction or um, transformation we want over these properties in order to create the properties that we give to the children but we can never modify our own properties and we can never modify the properties above us uh, in the levels above us the state the state is a different uh, behavior is something that belongs to the component. It's not something that comes from above. It's something that belongs to my component. I can use or read the value of a state, but I can also modify the value of the state. So imagine having a bunch of variables linked to the component, and this variable can be used and we can ask to modify them. Hmm? Well, actually, we cannot directly modify them. There's no direct way of modifying a state, uh, but we can, through the hooks, uh, we can ask the React uh, to update the state variables. And these values are private, owned by the component. They are not normally visible outside the component. They cannot be modified from outside the component. Okay, is some private property of the component, of the component instance, I would say. If I have three times the same component, each of them will have a different copy of the state, mm, a different uh, value associated with that. So it's part of, sort of an instance variable if we think in, in classes and objects, okay? Um, a state can be initialized, read, used and modified and we when we use the state uh, how how do you use it for but well, usually we can use it inside the component for our own computations and this computation will maybe affect uh, the render tree so depending on the state uh, maybe a state variable is the number of times we clicked on a button and this affects the number or maybe of elements uh, that can be displayed only if I click at least 10 times, uh, I will display a message, you click too much, or, or I show a number, so there will be a component that will show a number, and this, uh, the value of this number comes from a property, and this property is computed starting from the state. So from inside the component, the state uh, and the properties, in a way, are similar. There are some values, that we can use to customize the rendering. The only difference is that the properties cannot be touched, are immutable, or at least are immutable by us, and the state, in a way, can be modified, but not in the same render operation. Mm? The, we'll see in a moment that the modification of the state is asynchronous, so we can only schedule the modification for later on. This means that during the single execution of a function component, the state is a constant again. We know that we can change it in the future, but right now, during the, the, execution, of, uh, the execution of a function, it's constant. Mm, it's not modifiable. And so we, we, we say, basically, that the React component generates a render tree starting from the current value of the properties and from the current value of the state. Plus, he may schedule a change state for the future. Yes? No, 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 no. Uh, the only one that can trigger or schedule a state of the change is the component itself. It cannot be the children. The children don't have a reference, don't access the state. Of course, we can see the need for doing that. And we solve the, the, this problem by passing through a property a function that we own and that we will modify the state, yeah? 
that, that will be called the inverse data flow. Hmm? Okay, so this is the, the, the picture. We, we don't mention context for the moment, uh, but uh, once we understand the state, context will come easily because it's just a generalization. Uh, it's sort of a, a state that is, that is automatically accessible by many components at the same time. Okay, so uh, passing property, okay, it's something that we already did, uh, it's very easy. We do, when we instantiate a component in JSX, we just pass name equal to value. This value can be, like in JSX, uh, a string or an object, a JavaScript object in, in braces. And the value of these objects are available in the single props uh, argument of the component function. While, and so this is something that we already used last week. While this state, uh, what is the state? Well, a state variable or state object uh, is one object containing data private to a component. And this object is created by calling the use state hooks function. Okay, so if we want to have a variable that behaves like a state variable, we create it with use hooks. That will it's a sort of a factory that will create a special object for us. And this object will be linked uh, to this specific component instance. Uh, use state uh, is a function like this, we see here in this line, that takes one argument and returns an array of two elements. Okay? Uh, and it will create uh, one object in the JavaScript set, so this object can contain anything, anything we want, okay? Um, if we need, uh, we can create many state objects. Okay, every time we call use state, it will create a new object, so we can store different kinds of information in the same component. Or we can store one object with many properties with only one it's our choice uh, whether to use use state for storing very simple values, numbers, boolean, strings, uh, or uh, using use state to store objects or arrays. Uh, mm. There are trade-offs because uh, of the ways we can modify these objects. But theoretically, we can store any type of objects uh, inside the state, mm. state variable. Uh, use state uh, returns uh, I said an array of two elements. Usually we, dis we destructure the assignment so that we have uh, separate local variables uh, storing these two elements of the array because they are of totally different types. Uh, the first element is uh, the current value is a reference to the current value of the state. Okay, so the state variable can have a value that can change and the current value is always available in, for example, hidden. We are in this example, we tried to, to have uh, one uh, text component uh, that may show or hide uh, some text message. Uh, for example, uh, we are, the idea here is that uh, it, can, uh, it can show only a substring of the text or the full text, depending on the state, uh, whether it's hidden or not. So sort of a, a text where you have an el the ellipsis, say, okay, this is longer, there's something more, and if, if you click on it, it will expand, hmm? in a way. Okay, um, so we have this uh, no, uh, state, internal state of the component that knows whether it is in the expanded or collapsed state, in a hidden or not hidden state. So in this case, it's a very, very simple state. Uh, it's a Boolean variable. And the current value of this Boolean variable is hidden. Of course, we can create any name we want. Okay, the use state only creates an, op an anonymous object, uh, and we can store this object in the variable that we want. We can assign a name as we prefer. Inside this, the execution of this function, hidden is a constant, is the current value. Cannot and should not be modified, but can be used can query it uh, to do something else, hmm? to affect in some way the rendering or to compute other values, not a problem. 
so uh, a constant value that has an initial value and can be changed in some way. Where does the initial value come from? From the argument of use state. So the use state call has one argument in parentheses, which is the default value, the first initial value, not the default, the initial value of the object. When the object is, the state object is created, it, it doesn't create an undefined object, it will create an object with a given value. In this case, it's an object with true, a Boolean, uh, an object of Boolean type with value true. Okay, so. When we render the function, at the first time we call this to this component, uh, a new state is created. It will be set uh, to the initial value, in this case true, and this true is a value is available in the hidden variable that can be used throughout the rendering process. And in this render path here, hidden is a constant. We cannot directly modify it. To modify a state variable, we have a, 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 a mutation function. So the second argument here, said hidden, the second so result is a function to update the state, to schedule the update of a state. So we are creating a state object, we have a reference to the current value, and the reference to a function that is able to change this value. So we can never, we should never modify the variable itself. And even, well, in this case, it would be impossible to modify hidden because it declared as const. But you know that if I, instead of just a simple Boolean, I had created an array or an object, uh, const doesn't prevent you from modifying the content of the object, the properties or the object or the elements of, of the array, okay? So you are not blocked by the constant declaration, but you should not modify it in any, any way. So it's not real, really immutable. It's something that you sh we should think as immutable. Hmm? Let's not play tricks with the, with the state variable, like we don't play tricks with the properties. If we want to change or we need to change, we can just call this function set hidden with a new value. So for example, here we have a set it to false or set it to true, and we'll change uh, the next value of the state uh, to this, to what we specify as an argument. So we have the initial value and the dynamic value that are uh, applied by the set function. Uh, <coughs> just remember that we, when we are calling a setter, we normally we call it set with the same name of the of the state variable. It's just a convention, but it helps us. Okay. Um, set is an asynchronous function, so it will schedule the change at a later time. So actually, when we execute this function, hidden is constant. If by chance we are calling this uh, set hidden function then we know that in the future, the function will be re-executed, the component will be re-rendered with the new value of the state. Every time a prop changes, or every time a state changes, the component is re-rendered automatically by React. Okay, then React may be a bit clever if uh, several state variables or several properties change at the same time, it will only reevaluate the component only once instead of many times. So it's up to React to decide when, uh, when and how many times to reevaluate the component. But we can be sure that if a prop or a state changes, the component it will be refreshed, okay, I immediately. Um, okay. The, the special thing about this function, this use state function, is that the state variable is remembered every time. So if you read uh, this code just as normal JavaScript function, what you would see is that every time I call the function, I create a new object. This is what I would see normally if this wasn't a special hook. Because we are in a function, we are calling use state, it's a, it's a factory for a new object. So Ideally, this variable hidden is new, is fresh every time you execute the function, right? 
the special case of use state uh, every time you call use state it will try to attach to a previous version of the user object if that was created before so what use state does is, is try to check whether this function already has some state that has been created in the past and if so instead of creating a fresh value it will hook itself attached to the previous value to the previous object so in a way your state is creating the object and is hiding the reference of the object somewhere inside the function instance the component instance it's transparent to us okay so it's a special case where this use state doesn't be behave in a functional way. In a functional way, we expect every time we call the function to have a new object and it can modify this object. In this case, we are in the second call, we will get the same object as before. And this is what gives, gives the, the component a memory. We can change uh, one value and have this value remembered later on because your state will have an internal mechanism for remembering uh, the objects that it created storing them inside the component instance okay this is something that is invisible to us but just to understand the special behavior of this function so actually imagine hmm, that inside the component instance you have a small table with all the hooks references and every time you call the function Okay, the function is called without knowing anything. It calls use state, and you said before creating the object, just checked uh, in the table if something is already there. Um, okay, so we can maybe create a very uh, simple example just to play with that. Okay. Uh, for example, we can implement uh, a button that changes its text uh, according to the language, okay, we choose. So we may have a component with a button and clicking on that button will change the language that is used for the component and maybe for some other component below, okay? Just to familiarize, to, yeah, to get, get friendly <coughs> with this new, con new concept. So I created a very, simple project they call it uh, state uh, exercise call state uh, which is just uh, an empty project that is created so we are the browser okay Th so this is the default uh, application and we can just directly modify it uh, Okay, so we imagine that we have, uh, go away, okay, an empty uh, application when uh, we have one button and one text message, okay? So we can have uh, maybe one paragraph with a button and inside the button we can have some text uh, like this and after that we have a message okay something like this a button and a message so we want uh, right now the button does nothing and the text is always the same okay we want the button with to contain the string uh, Italian or English and when we click on the button we can complement it so we have a notion of a current language of my application okay so we can define a state uh, language set language use state uh, I don't know Italian IP uh, 
so uh, we are deciding that this state is a string variable it may be any object but usually when we set up the, the, the initial value we are also deciding the type of this object and normally uh, this type uh, should always should not change during the life cycle of all of the components so there's nothing that prevents me from storing into the language uh, uh, a, st a string uh, and then uh, modify it to a number or an, and then modify it to an, an array and so on but it would be difficult then to manage the value so normally we have in mind uh, the kind of content that a state object should have in this case it's a string that should be either it or yen right we call it language and we have a set of functions set language of course this state is a function that should be imported there Okay, we should have an import variable, uh, an import statement uh, for this state uh, from the React library. Let's uh, remove this uh, image. Um, okay, so now we have this constant state, constant because we, we don't modify it in any way for the moment, but we can use it to customize the rendering. So um, instead of writing language, if we are in Italian, on the button we write Italiano. And if we are in English, on the button we write English. Mm? And these are an easy way, an easy thing to do with a conditional statement. So if language equal to IT, then render Italiano. else render um, English so in this case the button now shows uh, the word Italiano let's try to put them side by side and see if it's still readable Of course, uh, the value of this variable has been initialized with this string it, and if it's it, then render italiano. So we are customizing the render according to the value of a state, a state variable. Of course, if I modify it to English in the code, that will modify, of course, the text. Nothing special. Um, and also we can do the same with the message uh, language equal to it then write uh, buongiorno else write uh, hello world Okay, right now it only depends on the initial value because uh, we have no means of changing it. For changing this, the, the state variable, we should uh, call the set language uh, function somehow. We should call the set language function only when uh, the button is clicked. Okay, we should not call, uh, for example, set imagine I doing something like this. If language equal to Italian, set language to English, else set language. back so the idea is that when the when we have one language we can switch to the other one the problem is that if I have it here this switch will happen 
every time the component is rendered. And what will happen is that the application never shows because it's uh, stuck in a sort of an infinite loop here. Because when I change uh, from Italian to English, it will change the state. Uh, but since the state is changed, the component needs to be re-rendered. Re-rendering the component means the calling the function again. And when I call the function, the state uh, will be changed again. And so we, I will never actually, React will never stop to show the page it's because it's still, uh, Every time I change the state, uh, the component uh, re-renders. So sh we should, I should always reach a steady state in which I'm not changing anything so that the component may render. Hmm? Otherwise, it's, it doesn't have time here to render the button which uh, will be which I'm changing at a very high speed. Hmm? So actually, this is the right thing to do, but only when the user presses the button. And so what we can do is to put this code uh, inside a callback uh, for the click event of the button. So we may have on click. So even in React, we can access uh, the, the events uh, on the DOM elements. Uh, uh, instead of uh, having an add listener on the DOM element, uh, we ju can just uh, use the on properties, on even name, in this case we have on click, uh, and we specify the code to execute. And the code can maybe toggle language. And toggle language can be a local function that is defined here. with our code. made one stupid mistake, so we will try again another time. So, what I did is just to encapsulate this state changing code into a function that is only called uh, when needed, not immediately, and I associated it with the on click event of the button. I can associate this function call to any kind of uh, event that you prefer. And so right now we are showing English because this is the initial state. When I click on the button, the on click callback will be called. This is a reference to a function. The this function will be called and will call set language. And set language will schedule the change of the language to the new value IP in this case. After the state has been changed to a new value, the component is rendered again. This time with a new value, with the IP value of the language, that will, of course, change uh, what we write on the button and on the message. If I click on the button again, the state is reversed and so on. Okay? So the event handler should contain a reference to a function. Okay, the mistake I did before was uh, of putting some parentheses here, and this is wrong because I'm calling the function right now when I'm generating this code, and uh, this doesn't, doesn't work. We happen as before that we are calling the function during the every execution of the code, so it's not, it's not the right thing to do. We are normally in a event handler. We should send a reference of a variable of a function, or normally we can also define an arrow function. So we, we can something like that. We have another button here. 
we can just write the code in here. I'm going to hold on to the English so that some syntax error, sorry. Uh, let's write one parent element, it should be not worried. And there I have some nesting problem. T closing T T button so the button on the T function. Why don't you find what's wrong with this? Okay. Ah, okay. We have too many parentheses here. So uh, one way is to define a local function and then send, uh, write a reference to this function or we just define a function in line with an error. Um, okay, in this case it's not complete. Uh, it should be the two cases uh, if uh, well, the same if the code as before here in line. Um, One, a different way I can do it, I, I'm creating a second button by doing everything in line, okay, without using this function. So in this case, what I would do is probably to have a, a conditional rendering. If language is IT, then I will render a button with the text uh, uh, Italiano and the clicky on this button will set the language to English. In, so on click uh, should be an error function that calls uh, set language to English. Otherwise, we render a button with English, and if clicked, uh, it will convert to Italian the same. Okay, so it's, diff it's a different way of doing that. We have one button that customizes the content uh, and there's a general generic toggle language function. In the second case, I'm generating two different kinds of buttons, each with a specific content and each with a specific callback. The, the, the final result is the same. No? It depends on how you prefer to write the code. Uh, this was, just, uh, was to show an, an example of a uh, a uh, callback function and event handler function, which is not defined online. Inline, sorry. Or we can define it outside uh, and uh, just use it. The important is that uh, you should pass a reference to a function, okay? Never call the function itself. And these two work uh, together. So you can click either button and have the, have the same result. They're just two different styles. And in, in our mind, uh, we always think that uh, language is a constant that will affect in some way the rendering of the, pay of the component. Then it may happen that somebody wants to change this constant. But this will happen later on. 
okay? Uh, after we call set language, uh, the value of language has not changed yet. It's still the old one. The component will finish to render, and then the state will change. After the state is changed, the component will be re-executed again. Okay, there are always a rendering phase and an update phase, and they are separate. Okay? Okay, and uh, what happens if uh, we want to, st uh, to store this message into another component? like this so now everything is into one single component and this is the component that owns the state right this is my state uh, i can change it with said language i can have to change it of course um and if i want okay so in this case uh, the the message Paragraph uh, is an easy way of querying directly the state variable to decide what to do. Okay, let's decide that we want to create another component with a message, function, message, prop. And so we want to render this message, this paragraph, inside this component. So render, uh, return this paragraph with a message okay so here we are just rendering message instead of the paragraph so how can the message know about which message it is it so uh, okay we should tell the message what is the current language so we can set a property with the current value of the language itself. Okay, we don't need the clause, we just. So we are instantiating a component message by passing a property that is computed starting from our state. Well, it's a copy of the state, of course. And so inside the, the component, it will be easy to query not language, because language is not something that is defined, but props of language. So we are turning a state uh, variable in my component into a property of my children. And it still works. And what happens is that when we click on the button, we are scheduling a change of the language. Fine. The language will be called, we will be changed. The app component is re-rendered. When the app component is re-rendered, it will call the message child with the new value of its property. And so React will notice that this message component is a new an updated property. And so React will decide that also the message component needs to be re-rendered. So every time you know, we render a component like, like, like this one that calls some children, React will always check whether the properties that we are passing to the children are the same as before or they have changed. If they are changed, they will re-render the, the, the child component. So we are sure, okay, that uh, the message will always show, will always reflect uh, the latest language. But we are not deciding when to call it. We are in a way saying, okay, if some of the property change, uh, let's re-render it again, and it's children recursively. So in the timeline, we are rendering the component, the app component for the first time with the default value of the state. Here, English, rendering everything in English like this, 
rendering a message with language equal to English. This is the initial value. This component is rendered and it creates a message in English. Then the user clicks on the button. Set language is called. Set language will schedule a, a, a change of the state. And when React will change the state, we'll schedule a re-render. So first uh, we schedule the state change, then React will update the state, uh, and the, uh, the state update will schedule the re-rendering of app, of the app component. One state is changed, so the component might be re-rendered. When this rendering happens, the app will find uh, this language as a constant, but with a different value. It doesn't care, it doesn't remember what it was before. All the function only sees the latest, the current value of the state. And it renders everything according to the new value, including children. And if children have some modified properties, also they will be scheduled to be, to be re-rendered again, only if the property changes, of course. Okay, so, the message does not require a state independent from the state of app. We don't need a, a state, a use state uh, for the language inside this component. Okay, because you could think, okay, but also the message should, should change. So we need a state variable to, to modify. No, we don't need a state variable because the, the reason or why this message is displayed is not independent uh, from the language uh, that we have above. It's a consequence. It's computed by, can be computed by. Okay, so the rule of React is trying to minimize the number of independent states uh, that we create. If something can be computed from the current properties and the current states, let's compute it. Let's not duplicate the state. Hmm? That will just only create problems. One mistake could be this one, and it's quite a frequent mistake. Um, const, message language, use message language, special exception. So let's imagine we are creating a state for the language of the message. We use state, and of course the default the initial value of this state is taken from the property. So the idea would be, okay, we have a property that is telling us the state. We use this property to create our own, a copy of the value. And inside our code, we just use our message language. Okay? This, this doesn't work. And we see how, let me refresh the application. I click here on English, hello world. So we have a state initialized to English. I'm calling message with the language equal to English. The first time I create the message component, we will uh, use this property of language, which is English, and create an inside variable with message language equal to English. I'm sorry, we rendered English. Then I click the button. The state of app updates, and we see it from the buttons. That now, now they are in Italian, so we are sure that language is now Italian, but the message didn't. And why it happens? Because, of course, uh, the message remembers the language until somebody changes it. So this state variable is independent from the other one. And this state variable was created the first time the message component has been created. Okay, so even if we see that, okay, but this language is 
copied from the props, but this is only this value is only used once at the creation of the space. If the prop change, when we saw, whenever the prop change, the component is re-rendered. Yes. And everything is recomputed. Yes. Except the hooks. The hooks don't follow this rule. And so this use state is not recomputed again with the new value of the prop. That is the first value that is stored inside the state and does not change anymore. So the bottom line is never try to track a property into a state. To create a state that depends on a property. What you're doing is something that is not will not follow the modification of the property. Okay? The state that governing this language is not a state local to message, is the global state that we have in in app. Okay? So this is something that we should never do. Creating states from properties is a no. Basically because we don't, uh, we have no control, uh, okay, over, we, we, uh, we, we, you, you, can, you could imagine of doing nasty things to try to uh, discover if this property changed, but it, you, you are just, uh, you would just be fighting against the model. Hmm? So, uh, let's, props.name. Okay, let's put it again in the same state. We should minimize the number of state variables and try to recompute everything else from these state variables. So what we saw that we have a component that owns a state, the component can manage the evolution of the state, and the component can pass this state uh, down to other children. Easy enough. Now, imagine we want to move uh, the button into a child component because we want to make it more complex, nicer, and whatever. Okay, so moving the message was easy because the message component only needs to have a, a copy of the state, the value of the state. But the button is more complex. Let's say we create a function, my button, And uh, of course, I can render. Maybe let's make it in this way. We're using the second approach. Okay, it's the same. to move the event handlers. JSX context. And let's put a, another button below here after the message. My button language equal to language. So this is the third button that we have below here. So if I click on the first or the second button, everything works. 
and the third button, the my button component here, updates its text, of course, because it's receiving a copy of the language property. It's the same as the message, okay? So the problem comes when we try to click on this button, because we, we would expect that clicking on this button would trigger state change. Now the problem is that the my button component would like to change a state that doesn't belong to it. I want here from a child comp component to change the state of my father component. How can I do that? I, I can, yeah, yeah, right now I can't because I don't, I should be able in a way to call that language. Okay? I cannot, of course, uh, change the properties of the language. It would be useless. Okay, first is a property, so we sh I should deal with it in an immutable way. But even if I try to change it, uh, it will never change the state from it that from which it's computed. So in a way, the child component uh, may only modify a state of the father component if the father component gives to the, chi the, the child uh, some function to modify the state. So I'm giving you a copy of the state, okay, and then also giving you a reference to a function that you can call whenever you need to change the state. And one possibility that I don't suggest uh, is to pass uh, the set language property as a set language function. So I'm giving you a copy of the current value of the state and then giving you a copy of the reference to the function that ca you can use to change the state. But in general, it's too low level or it's too dangerous because in this way I'm giving you full access to my state variables. Okay, here we have only one variable. It's just a string, so you cannot do extra damage. But it would be better to give to the children some higher level function uh, with the allowed modifications of the state. So, for example, it would be better we already have this toggle language function. Toggle language is nice because whenever you call toggle language, the language changes and it always changes in a controlled way. So, if tomorrow we know we want to add the third language, we just have to modify this function. And the children component don't need to know about which languages are supported or what is the, the algorithm for changing the language. So normally, we are not passing the setter function itself. It will just like you know, give you full access and then you can do, especially when we have many state variables that we must you know, work with them in a coordinated way. We cannot expect all our children to know which is the right way of combining the state. We give some higher level function, toggle, add, delete, uh, and then we, in our component that own the state, where we own the state, we define the, the possible or the legal manipulations of that state variable. It's the same when you're creating an object, uh, you have some internal properties and you expose some method for doing the right, right thing with this object. So in this case I would, pass this toggle language function to the children as an extra property. So my button now receives two properties. One is just a string and the second is a function. This function can be called uh, what is the my button when the user clicks on the button. On click. Uh, 
dot uh, toggle blend. And again, below. So, the state is owned by app. App can propagate uh, the state as property to the children, to all the children that need to know about the current state. Plus, app, which is the owner of the state, can define some callback function and pass this callback function to all the children that need to modify the state. The children have no lexical visibility over the state variable, over the set function, and so on. They just have a reference to a callback, and this callback will be executed in the context of the component. So here we have language, we have set language because they are local variable. We have a closure over this variable. And we can implement all the logic, all the control that we want uh, to ensure that the state is managed in a correct way. We just give, we don't, I'm not giving you the keys of my home, I only give you some operations that you can do to manage the state. So a child component can use the current state by receiving it as a property, copy of the reference, or can modify the state if the father component, the owner of the state, <coughs> Sorry, gave me some function for doing that. So the information flow is always the same, okay, from top to bottom. A component gives some properties to its children and so on. Some of these properties can be used to have an inverse data flow. So call a child can call a, a function from one of its uh, ancestors, the father or the father of the father or whatever. And this is the only way where information can flow from the bottom to the top. Another consequence of these rules is that uh, the state, uh, any state variable, should be high enough to be in a component uh, uh, which is the, the common ancestor of all the other components that would need a value or we need to be able to modify. So it would be impossible, impossible, okay, to store the state here in my button, in a, in a child component. If I store the state here, there will be no way to transfer this value to my siblings or to my father. Okay, so React calls from uh, an operation which is normally called state lifting. When we have some information and we need to share some information with other components, uh, usually we lift up this information, this state, uh, up to the first common ancestor. Component which is father to all the components, all the subcomponents, all the children that need to read the data or to modify the, the data. Okay. <coughs> okay, this was easy. Let's imagine now we want to add one other feature to this application, which is a, a counter of how many times uh, the button has been clicked. So maybe beside the message, buongiorno, we say buongiorno, one, two, three, four, five, and every time we click on the button, we increment this number. Okay, very simple to, to do. So the idea is we need another state variable, a counter, which is independent from the language. So we need a second 
count variable, use state, initialize it with zero. This would be an integer state. And easy enough, uh, we should call uh, pass sorry the count variable to the message. So uh, the message should also also have the language and also the count. And of course, uh, we also add uh, the count here. Not, not count, but remember that some when something is wrong, always open the console. It will tell you why. Count is not defined. Yeah, I remember. I forgot the problem. Okay, but uh, this was easy. But if something is wrong, uh, the console is your friend. Remember. Okay, so the props the count. And of course, it will always z be zero because we, we never incremented it, okay? Okay, so how to increment uh, a state variable? Um, we can call set count uh, with a new, new value. For example, we can use the set count inside the toggle language. So whenever we change the language, whenever we click the button, we increment the count. So we should repeat this information every time uh, we toggle the language, we change the language. So it, in this case, having the toggle language is very useful because there's only one place where we, up, uh, we are updating both states information. In the second case, uh, when we have the button with the set language call, I should uh, modify it uh, by having, by adding the increment st uh, of the state. Okay. So for the moment we have this set language, toggle language, we just have to increase the state. Uh, so set count uh, to count plus one. And this instruction is wrong. I will try to explain you why, okay? It seems logical. Okay, we have a current value and we are scheduling for the new value to be the current one, the current uh, value plus one, okay? So in this case, if I save it, I click on the first button, it will increase. Every time it changes the language, the number is also increasing. If I click on the third button, also. It will also work because they are both calling uh, toggle language, and toggle language is updating the language and the count. Fair enough. The second button is not working. It only changes the language, but not the, the number. Okay, because we are, we, are, we are only modifying the language here. We should modify it also with the count, but for the moment, let's not use the second button. What's the problem here? It, it, it seems to be working until Okay, in this case, it would be very difficult. Imagine we are clicking the button extremely quickly. What happens is that uh, we are, imagine that we are clicking the button in a faster way than React is able to refresh the page. Okay? What happens is that uh, we are scheduling the count, so let's reset to one, to zero. Now count is zero, we click on the button and we are scheduling set count to be zero plus one. Good. Now count is one, if I click on the button, I'm scheduling count to become one plus one. But imagine we are really quick and click on the button twice before React has a chance to re-render everything. So 
right now, in our mind, we are clicking twice. Count is one. So the first time we click, we are scheduling the count to become one plus one. Current value of count plus one. And immediately after, we are again executing this toggle language, and uh, it will set, uh, the, we will schedule the state to become one plus one again. Not two plus one, one plus one. Why? Because we didn't give the time in a, in, uh, enough time to for count to be updated. It was only scheduled. What I'm doing here is that I'm uh, scheduling a new value, which is based on the current on the computation on top of the current value. But we have a race condition. If the you have many, let's say, different updates uh, to be done on the same variable, we never know whether the if I'm scheduling two updates. Uh, we never know whether the second update will happen before or after the effect of the first one has been complete, has been applied. What we are doing is we are computing count plus one now with the current value of count. The real thing that we should do is to update the count with the current value of count, uh, but this current value should be taken when the update happens, non, not when it's scheduled. Uh, this is a difference. We are scheduling a change with a value which is computed now at scheduled time. This is dangerous. We want to schedule a change with a value that will be computed when the change happens. So that if in between there, there are other changes, their effect will already be visible. Okay? And this is easy to do by, in this case, we are passing an expression, a value, to the set function. And in this case, the value of the expression is computed when we execute line 15. So when toggle language is, is, is uh, called. But if we wanted to, if we want to delay the execution of, uh, of this update, we just uh, we can use a callback. So a set of the new state will receive a callback whose argument is the old value of the count, and uh, the, the result is the new value of the count. I'm not calling it count not to make confusion. I'm changing just the name. So what I'm saying here, I'm scheduling an update to the count state there right now. And I'm giving you a callback that contains the rule for updating. Plus one, times two, whatever. When the when React decides to update, so to execute this schedule change, it will simply call the callback by giving synchronously at this moment, giving the current value, the current future value of count as an argument to the callback and just uh, setting the new value to the result of the callback. So the computation is the same, but it's delayed in time up until the very last moment and in this way, the I call it old count, but it actually would be an old count, an old new count, because the count may be a change in the mean, in the meantime. And then always using the th there are no verbs in English to say the the, the 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 old current value in the future or whatever. Okay, but we see what happens. So the rule here is. Whenever we are setting a state depending on the current value of this state, always do that in a callback. So 
so that all this all the modific uh, we are not losing any modification okay. otherwise the risk is that uh, we are applying a modification on top of an old value which is no longer valid no longer current okay and this happens in this case we are setting a constant so it's not a big issue but in this case we are, we are computing something based on the previous value Okay, so whenever we are setting a state uh, based on the current value of the state, uh, always use this thing. Okay. Um, there's one final point uh, that will... Uh, will... Uh, come out uh, in uh, when we are doing something more com a bit more complex uh, is that uh, with set set count set language by setting the state uh, we must always provide a new object okay when we call set state uh, we should provide a new object uh, that will replace the old value of the state here it's, it's easy enough there are strings and numbers so they are immutable every time we we are passing a new string or we're passing a new number it's a different object that's easy but if the state is something more complex like an array an array of numbers we should and we want to I don't know change the content of the array change one element okay we cannot uh, modify the current uh, state uh, or return a modified version of the current state we should create a new array with a modified value with a new element or with a, a different value and so on okay so when we when we deal with the in the next hour with states made uh, out of arrays um, we should remember that every modification should create modification to the state should create a new array and if this array contains objects and we are wa we want to modify one of these objects we, we must create a new object with a data value this is because uh, react needs to understand very quickly whether something has changed or not you, we cannot imagine that react goes recursively into a data structure to understand that you modify the second field or the fourth element of an array it just checks the reference so it assumes that if the reference is the same the object didn't change and if you are changing something you need to modify the reference that, that means creating a new object okay so this becomes a bit it's a it's a, it's a bit of a burden because the code will be more complex than just adding one element to an array. Instead of adding one element to an array, we should create a new array with, an, with one more element. Okay, there are some, you know, the, the, all the filter and the, the, all the spread operators and so on that we played with at the beginning of the course uh, will come very useful right now. And we will forget about uh, push or other methods that modify the array. They will not be allowed in the context of a state change. Okay, but this will be for later. Okay, so these are the the main consequences of the very simple hook. Hmm? And uh, okay, these are I think the same. Yeah, that we already saw in the example. The callbacks. Uh, Okay, yes, I'm just checking whether I forgot something, but uh, the counter is there. Yeah, the state lifting. Uh, the examples in the slides are, are uh, a bit different, but uh, uh, the main concepts are, are here. Um, we try to be very, to limit ourselves with state, uh, try to understand which is the minimum amount of state that we need, uh, um, and do as much as possible with props and with re recomputation. Uh, it will not be easy, 
every time to understand uh, which component owns the state, what are the operations that we are allowed uh, to do with that state, or the children are, will be allowed to do with the state. Okay. Okay. So uh, in the next hour, we'll try to modify or to extend uh, our classical example. We exercise eight here by adding a state variable uh, for the list of answers no, of our exercise. Right now, uh, the list of answers is a constant. We should prepare for them to be changed. And so we should I introduce the state into our uh, application. We need to think about how many state variables, uh, uh, where to put them, which operation we can define on them, and so on. Okay? So that is what we are trying to do after the break. Um, if you want, uh, you can uh, pull from the, from the GitHub uh, the, the, the weeks, uh, uh, in the weeks uh, repository. Uh, you, we already have, I already uploaded an um, exercise eight, QA exercise eight, uh, which already has the skeleton of the of what we did last week uh, with uh, all the React Bootstrap uh, layout and something. Which is, we will start from there, okay? If you want, so you can um, pull from, uh, from the repository and so we can work from, from the page four. Okay. I think it's a good moment to make a break. <laughs>